how did Amiga Pharma Quick Step in a bunch sprint stage create this scenario with four lead out men plus Cavendish and the other sprinters gapped off the wheel? Cav won the third stage of the Giro this year, now in his second stint at Quick Step. And I covered this stage a while ago on the channel, but now I've got the official rights. I thought, let's bring it back to life because Cav's recent win with their lead out train reminded me of his first stint at Quick Step, Pereno Adriatico 2014. Phil Gilles, I think, had been in the break for BMC, and Marcel Kittel had been dropped. There were a few hills in this stage, but it was a flat finish in Porto Sant Elpido. We have Andre Greipel here with the old Lotto Bella Sol train and Amiga Pharma Quick Step on the right hand side. They have Tony Martin, Kwiatkowski, Trentin, Renshaw, Pataki, then Cavendish in the British National Champs kit. On the left is the Lotto train featuring Seberg, De Buscherer, Greipel in the German National Champs kit. Peter Sagan's got one right with him on Cannondale. They'd push the climbs hard trying to drop, drop the pure sprinters. I think the other sprinters are like DeMar for FDJ and the big two favourites with Kittle gone are Amiga Farmer Quickstep with Cav on the left-hand side and Lotto Bellasol with Andre Greipel. Just another battle between these two riders and there's two right-hand corners in this finish that are pivotal and there's something similar to left-hand corners actually tomorrow in the Giro d'Italia finish which are pivotal and Amiga Farmer Quickstep want to be first through that corner. It's actually rare you see nowadays even in the tour last year big trains set up often there's one but even quick step don't have four or five men anymore they usually go with three or four max late from 1600 here they're set up early i think that's uh renshaw telling the mtn quebec guy don't even think about taking pataki's wheel that's Cavs' wheel and they're going to get through this corner first and safely the first of two kvyatkovsky in the polish national champs kit at the front of the race and you see that lotto belasol they only have three guys whereas quick step have four with kvyatkovsky and so they're just trying to sit in right now and they can't take front position through this corner i presume they maybe wanted to move up late and here is that first right hander that's pivotal and you're going to see the accordion effect through this corner quick step take it at pace and then they string it out but behind if you are in first 20 25 wheels you get strung out and here we can see Greipel has actually lost the wheel of his lead out he's going to try and have to move up starting from underneath this railway line underpass whereas Quickstep have sparked out that corner with Kwiatkowski it was his job and he does this now to the three kilometer zone with Ineos GC riders he goes through the last corner and then that leaves three men for Cavendish to lead him out there's a crash behind Lamprey and Lotto Bellas. I think a Lamprey man went down. We'll see it in slow motion here. First from the front on, Lamprey rider pedals through the corner, clips his pedal, slides out, takes out Seberg and the entirety of the Lotto Bellasol train, except Greipel, because Greipel was detached from that train. And you can actually see in this shot here, he almost crashed himself because he's trying to move up. He's not far to the left. He's almost the furthest to the right of the rider. So he rides at this corner straight. And because he's riding straight he, and trying to take it at speed to move up, he almost overlaps wheels with the Lamprey riders. He doesn't go down. But most importantly now, with that crash, there's a gap. Sagan's on the wrong side of it, as well as Damar. Greipel's having to close it down himself. We saw this in the Tour of Britain last year in the stage, Ethan Hayes won, where he beat Cavendish in its solo if you're closing down at this point in the race as a sprinter, you may as well give up because you have no chance against four quick step riders leading out Cavendish. Their positioning was perfect. I don't think their train overall these days is as good as this. We saw on st stage three of this Giro, Cav had to go from 300 because they couldn't actually deliver him that late. Whereas here with the, you know, Pataki is your last man with Renshaw, not even last man. Just ridiculous. And Kluger's like, nope. I'm out whilst Trenton is pulling all these riders who are getting back to Cav's wheel. Greipel gets there, looks down, he's like, nope, I'm out. Sagan is actually there, but he's at the behest of whether FDJ, I think with oh, William Bonnet, who pulls out, sees that he's leaving a gap for DeMar's last man and says, sacre bleu, and is not happy with that. So at this point of the sprint, Cavendish has already won. I mean, the question is, how much would he win by? Renshaw starts to wind it up, brrr, and it's Pataki last wheel, and more riders pull out. DeMar's last man, Lamprey rider. We've got Apollonio for Azure Desert actually trying to, or he doesn't even, he gives up on first. He just decides not to close this gap. It's DeMar going around. Pataki starts his lead out. I don't even think, Cav might have thought Griper was still in there, so they didn't even know Quickstep 
how much of a dominant position they were in when Cav launches ridiculous, what, 20, 30 bike lengths, maybe more, wins this stage sprinting through the line, could have had a more a bigger post up. And this is one of the most dominant sprint train performances, just an absolute clinic that you will ever see. I mean, the firepower was absurd. Like, as I said, Trenton in his prime, Pataki, Renshaw, Kwiatkowski in his prime, Tony Martin setting it all up before those corners, making sure they were at the front. And Pataki could have won this stage himself easily with Cav launching in that super aero position that, you know, wasn't, he still got that position and Damar and Gaviria couldn't come out of his wheel in it uh, the last week in the Giro d'Italia. But I do wonder, and you see teams like Lotto Sudal, like, is it worth these days investing in a huge train in five, six guys, all as a dedicated lead out, putting all your eggs in that basket? Like, FDJ have done that at this Giro d'Italia. They've got, like, a six-man train, but you better win some sprints if you've got your whole team around the lead out. And at the Tour de France, for example, Quickstep themselves go for a much more balanced squad around Alaphilippe on punchy stages and then four men for the sprints. But here you can see Trent and Renshaw being like, that was a lot easier than I thought. Cavendish looking for a, Alan, Alan, where's my hat? Alan, is maybe what he said. I don't know. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'd forgotten I'd even covered this stage in the past. I don't like doing double uploads, but I thought, why not bring it back to life? I'd probably do it in better quality nowadays anyway. And I thought with Cav winning in the Giro in Italy once again in his second stint at Quickstep, why not dive back into the archives? And I'll see you with the next one. Ciao.